Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. In this one, we're going to concentrate on Jed and Shen, which went live on the Cardano mainnet yesterday. Great to finally have the Jed stablecoin live. Lots to discuss. There were some interesting conversations in the community over the last few days. After some of the details that Cody brought out about how it's all going to work, we'll talk all about that. Hopefully it helps in your research and understanding of how all of this works. If you get value, please do share it out. Give the video a like. Comment questions or anything down below. Subscribe if you're new. Do appreciate it. Let's jump into it. Okay, timestamps below as usual. If you look here, you can see that on the Jed website, we're now gone to mainnet and NAMI is still the only wallet that you can interact with. I know they are working on other wallets, but I think most people will generally interact on DEXs and centralized exchanges, the same way with USDT or USDC, which are the biggest stable coins, that generally people will interact with them on DEXs or exchanges rather than going directly to the contract or to the source to mint and burn them. If we look, the stats that are here are the live stats, but just for anyone who isn't familiar with Zed or Shen, so Zed is the stable coin and Shen is the reserve coin. I'll explain more on that in a minute. So if we look here at something that Cody brought out a few weeks ago, talking about where Zed fits with other stable coins. So you can see fiat backed ones here on the right are generally centralized and they are USDC, USDT will be the two most popular ones where they're supposed to be backed by one US dollar in the bank for every one USDC that's in circulation. On a decentralized side, then you do have algorithmic stable coins. And when Jed was talked about first, it was talked about as an algorithmic stable coin, but there seems to be a push for over collateralized. Now, there's definitely a case to make it more over collateralized rather than algorithmic. I think UST and everything that happened there has made people very fearful of the word algorithmic stable coin. And there's a lot of differences with Jed and UST, which you'll see in a minute due to the over collateralization and how that part of it works. In this one, generally the algorithm is responsible for keeping the parity and it can be involved in the minting and burning of the underlying governance token as well. On over collateralized with Jed, it is it says here over collateralized up to one to eight. It can actually go above eight and that'll make more sense in a few minutes as well. Decentralized, there was talk on this of how decentralized it is when you have one entity controlling the front end and setting fees and stuff. But again, we'll talk about that when we go through the articles. So with the Jed, one Jed represents one US dollar, or that's the way it's meant to be. So if you go on to a DEX or you come onto the contract here and you mint Jed, then what you do is essentially sell your ADA at that current price for Jed. It's the same as selling your ADA into any other stable coin. With Shen, it works different in that when you sell your ADA for Shen, you're really hoping that the price of ADA goes up because if the price of ADA goes up, that means the reserve that is sitting there to back Jed and Shen, that means there's less ADA needed to back Jed, which means that the price of Shen in terms of ADA should go up as well. And I'll explain a bit more on the different cases or circumstances where the price might change there but that's essentially what it is now when you hold shen as well there are risks that if the price of ada drops or if people mint a lot more jed than shen then the collateral ratio that's there there will be enough to support jed but to support all of shen then the price could be really affected there and again we'll talk about the different cases on that so this is Actually, we'll just finish out here that the current reserves sit at 591%. And how that's worked out is that there is 27 million ADA sitting in the reserve, which is worth just over $10 million or 10 million Jed because they should be one Jed equals one US dollar with 1.7 million Jed in circulation. So that means there's roughly $10 million to back up the $1.7 million Jed that's in circulation. So nearly one... There's nearly $6 to back up every $1 or one Jed that's in circulation. So it doesn't take into account Shen, but you'll see the role it plays in a few minutes. So this is the article here that caused a bit of controversy earlier in the week and sparked, I would say, lots of good conversations. Definitely with me as well when I read it first. There's aspects of it that I wasn't that happy about. Some of them I'm happier on now because I see from an operational standpoint why they would be done. There's others I think definitely room for improvement though. So this talks about why the over collateralization, why aim for between 400 and 800%. They based it on that 
Looking back at the history of ADA, the biggest monthly decrease of the price of ADA was 66%. If you look down here, it's 66.28%. And in order to keep Jed collateralized with a drop like that, then you would need the collateral ratio to be at 300%. So they went with 400% as the minimum target to have it, uh, just to give a little bit extra room. Previous examples of this, you can see here similar protocols such as Sigma USD over on Ergo has worked with Simple Jed as well. So it's Simple Jed in version 1.1, 1 .1, which is this one. And 1.3 will bring in extended jet and we'll cover that in a minute as well if you want to look into the history of how this has worked you can read up on sigma usd if you look at bear whale as well there was some people referenced that during the week as well on where there was a run a bank run on shen holders or the equivalent over on ergo that'll give you a bit of history there and how that was done and some of the patches that were brought in to help navigate that so just to look at the different percentage reserve ratios and what can happen at each level so this article went live yesterday again i'll leave links to the different articles that i reference here down below this is the screenshot that i wanted so you can see that at 400 to 800 percent which is where we sit now being at the 590 percent this is where they want to basically keep it or at least over 400 percent this is where you can mint Jed, you can burn Jed, you can mint Shen, or you can burn Shen. So everything works fine at these levels. So if it goes down below 400%, things that might bring it down below 400% would be if the price of ADA starts to decline, that means the reserves that are sitting there to back up Jed, the value of them in US dollars goes down. So that means that the reserve ratio might go down below 400% or what could bring it down close to 400% would be people coming in and actually minting more Jed. So as there's more Jed minted, then it put, brings the ratio down if there isn't 4x that being minted on the Shen side. If you look, when we do go below 400%, you can't mint any more Jed, but you can burn it because when you burn Jed, that will help push the ratio back up again because you don't need the extra collateral to back up that Jed that is getting burned. On the other side of the scale then with Shen, when you go below 400%, you can mint more Shen, but you can't actually burn Shen. And this is the risk or one of the biggest risks that comes in for Shen holders is that below 400%, as you can't burn it at the smart contract, you can, at any stage, you can buy and sell over on DEXs. We'll cover that towards the end. You can buy and sell over there. But if you can't actually burn at the contract and you need fairly fast liquidity that means you might have to sell at a discount over on exchanges if the ratio went a decent bit below the 400 percent so if the markets are going down then that's where you might have to sell at a fairly decent discount on dexes so if you're getting into it make sure you get in knowing all of the risks and the rewards because there are some if the price of ada goes up that's going to help as well as staking rewards are paid out to shen holders which we'll touch on in the article in a minute if it goes above 800%, so the initial slide that I showed you mentioned one to eight, but it can go above that 8x collateral. And at above 8x or 800%, you can mint Jed, you can burn Jed. And on the Shen side, you can't mint any more Shen because they don't want to flood the market with Shen and dilute the value for Shen holders. You can burn Shen when it goes above 800% and burning Shen would pull the price or pull the ratio back down under 800%. Things that would make it go above 800%. So this is a question I got yesterday. So I took this screenshot when it went above 800%, it was at 803. And the reason for this was they, they allowed you to mint Shen up to 800%, but then the price in the market, the price of ADA started to go up. So that's what pushed the reserve ratio back up over 800%. So coming over to the fee structure then, and this is another topic that sparked a lot of conversation and lots of people not happy about how it's set up. We'll go for the screenshot, but just to say on this first, that they have mentioned here that after launch, when they move from bootstrapping to day-to-day -day operations, transaction minimums amounts may be reduced. So if we look at the minimums here for Jed, you have to mint a minimum of 5,000 Jed when you're doing it at the contract. And with Shen, it's a minimum of 5,000. Burning then, you can burn a minimum of 1,000 Jed and burn a minimum of 2,500 Shen. So the fees on this as well are set at 1.5%. 
So every time you mint or burn, you pay a fee of 1.5%. This 1.5% goes back into the pool to help push the reserve up and in turn helps Shen holders because there's more ADA there to collateralize because the fee is taken when you mint or burn Shen or Zed. So it just adds a little bit extra ADA into the pool. I would like to see this maybe reduced in time as well. Maybe 1% could be achievable. When you look at extended jet, that's when dynamic fees and things like that will come in as well. I'll touch on some of the points of dynamic jet as well. If you come down here, then there's one other fee that there was lots of questions about, and that is on jet and Shen operational fees, there is going to be a 100 ADA fee, which is paid to Coty. So Coty take this 100 ADA on every mint or burn of jet or Shen. They take the 100 ADA, they convert it into Coty, and then they put that into the Coty reserve. So those people saying that basically when you mint and jet, mint and burn, Jed or Shen, what you're doing is giving ADA up to be sold to Coty to be taken into the treasury. But in turn, in time, that will change to a 0.5% fee. It was meant to be a 0.5% fee, but they couldn't implement it in simple Jed due to some technical reasons for the start. But in time, that will be 0.5%. So then on to staking. So staking wasn't meant to be a part of version one, but they have put in a, they've put in one type of a technical setup. And there are some reasons for doing that. It has sparked some controversy in the community of the pool that shows and the fees and things like that. We'll talk through it here. So the immediate technical setup will be temporary. One thing that is really missing for them is multi-pool staking. So with Cardano right now, when you want to stake a Cardano wallet or a Cardano contract, then you have to stake that to one stake pool. So once they have multi-pool staking, they'll be able to support a lot more pools in the ecosystem. Before now, it has to be staked to one pool. So initially they're going to be staking to Wave and that did spark some controversy on staking to a pool, staking to a group that has a massive number of pools currently, but that will be changed in time and you'll see that. So long term, it will be where they get, when we get multi-pool delegation on Cardano, then they'll be able to delegate to multiple different pools. And initially, or in the short term, in a couple of weeks, they say here, a dedicated and private pool for Jed will be made available with much lower fees because the fees was definitely a hot topic. The wave were going to set the fees at 8% or they did, but they have pulled that back to 5%. They are going to be putting up a 11 million. I think it is. This is the pool here on pool.pm. You can see they have a pledge of nearly 11 million, which should make up a small bit of the extra fee that they have. But it will be good to see when they do implement their dedicated pool and long term getting multi delegation so that they can start supporting different pools within the community as well. So I'll leave links to this address down below for people who want to dive a bit deeper into it or maybe track it here as well. So that was on staking. Then looking at the rewards that this pool re receives, what actually happens to them. So delegation rewards will be automatically distributed to eligible Shen holders and that held Shen during the epoch for which the rewards are distributed. So if you look here, they will be taking snapshots. They say periodic snapshots. I haven't heard of how, how often they're going to happen yet. As I get more information on that, I'll let you know. The rewards then from the pool, every fourth consecutive epochs so roughly every 20 days the rewards that were earned will be airdropped to shen holders if you look here there will be this section i haven't seen this page yet where you'll be able to go in and keep track if you're a shen holder go in and keep track of what rewards you have earned and what epoch they were for you don't have to be delegated to any specific pool with the shen that you hold you can see in whatever stake pool you're in, the rewards will just be airdropped there. And you can see here, all Shen holders get delegation rewards, regardless of whether they minted Shen on the platform or bought on a DEX or centralized exchange, as long as it sits in your own wallet. I did see something about that if you provide liquidity and it's sitting on the exchange, then you won't be entitled to the staking rewards then. So the operational fee then, we talked about the 100 ADA already, which is on minting and burning Jed or Shen that goes to Coty. There is also 25% of delegation rewards are going to go to the Coty treasury as well. I think this part here is a bit high and hopefully we see this reduced. So 75% of the rewards go to Shen holders, that's through the airdrop. But in the future, I would like to see this come down. 
They talk about here about the 0.5%. So this is the overall operational fee. This was the initial plan. So if they can bring this part in in the future, we wouldn't see the 100 ADA or hopefully we wouldn't see the 25% on delegation rewards. Or if we do see something on delegation rewards, hopefully it's a lot smaller than 25% because that definitely is a bit high. So if we look here at the screenshot, you can see version 1.1.1 is what we have right now is minimal jed. Version 1.2 will be minimal jet as well, but will incorporate the Vazel hard fork features. And 1.3 will bring in extended jet, which brings in more security, dynamic fees and prices. And they want to also bring in in this version, multi-pool delegation. So that would mean delegating to multiple pools in the community. They also say here about future plans to add other assets aside from ADA to collateral, maybe wrapped Bitcoin or wrapped Ethereum. So we'll see where that goes. But for now, I'm quite happy to have it as just ADA. In terms of buying right now, one other good point to mention is that you can see DeFi Llama have added Jed onto the site as well. It's good to see they were proactive in getting it added in there. So we'll see how these numbers grow over time as well. I know not everyone's a fan of TVL, but it is a metric used by the wider crypto ecosystem as well. So where to buy it? You can buy it over on MinSwap. You can buy it on MusiSwap. You can buy it on SundaySwap. And Bitru just went live as a centralized option as well. Currently, the best place to buy it or the place with the most liquidity is over on Wing Riders. That if you look at the other DEXs there, then they don't have much liquidity just yet. I would expect them to grow over time. And if you're looking to do swaps like Jed into IUSD from Indigo, then Wing Riders would be the place to do that because they have now put their stable swaps live on mainnet as well. So hope this video has helped in your own research and your understanding of how this works. For me personally, I haven't minted any Jed yet because when you mint Jed or buy Jed, you are basically selling the ADA for that dollar price at that time. So I'm not ready to do that just yet. On Shen, I have minted Shen through the contract here. Process was smooth. And I've done that for two parts. One part to get involved, see how it all works from the inside. I'll get the airdrops of the ADA staking rewards and it gives me a better understanding of how it all works. On the other side, I've done it as part of my DeFi portfolio as well. It is a very small part of the portfolio because there are risks in it. Look, there are benefits getting the airdrops. Hopefully the price of ADA is starting to get to a better stage and will start to go up. So if that all happens, then Shen will be a good buy. There is the other side of it that we talked about. If the price goes down, if there's a bank run on Shen, obviously the price of Shen in terms of ADA will go down as well. But I'm willing to take that risk knowing what I know. Hopefully what we've went through has helped your understanding, given you a better idea of what's going on. Lots more updates to come. Make sure you subscribe and give the video a like. I do appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.